Hi, this is Matt McKee with Phi.ca. This is part three of my six part video series where I'm going to be showing you exactly how I implement the burn investing strategy on my rental property in London, Ontario on Elias Street. In this video, we're really going to be focusing on the exact renovations I undertook on this property, what the cost of those renovations were, why I chose to do those renovations, man hours I put into the project or the sweat equity I spent on it, and I'll discuss with you what I consider the most strategic renovations that are going to get you the best bang for your buck when you renovate your rental property or even if you're renovating your personal residence. So just a quick reminder though, part one of this series is where I really discuss what the term BRRRR was. So if you haven't checked out part one, go ahead and check it out now. But quick refresher, BRRRR stands for buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. And so in part two of this video series is where I focused on buying a rental property and showed you the exact strategies and tactics that I use and how I bought this property for 22,000 under asking in a neighborhood that frequently now is selling for above asking. So let's get into the renovations though. Before discussing the exact renovations I undertook on this property, let's just quickly discuss how to figure out what renovations you should be undertaking yourself. So at the end of the day, you really just wanna focus on the renovations that are gonna get you the best bang for your buck. When you first get possession of your rental property, you're probably gonna show it to your friends and family members, and they're all gonna share with you a multitude of opinions. Most of those opinions are gonna be wrong, particularly if they're coming from non-landlords, non-real estate investors, because they're gonna be focused on the, the homeowner's perspective. And so that's really not what a landlord is. But as a landlord, you're really gonna be focused on what's going to increase the value of the property, but also what's going to increase the rents and increase the quality of tenants you're going to be getting. The absolute best way to get a bang for your buck is painting. Painting so cheap and it can be done by anyone. You just need a little bit of time and patience. So repaint the unit. That's gonna be the fastest, easiest way to increase the, the look of the unit. It'll make it just seem so much fresher and cleaner. It'll get rid of the smell of the old tenants unless they're really heavy smokers or had some real pet issues in the unit, in which case you might need to put down like a special bin primer, something that's really gonna seal that smell in. But even then, you're still talking a few hundred dollars in cost versus a lot of the renovations that I see other wannabe landlords doing, and they're just over improving without any rationalization behind their thought process. They're just improving it to what they would like, not what tenants expect or what tenants want. In addition to that, consider touching up the flooring. There's all sorts of cheap, affordable solutions where you're really going to be out of pocket. You know, something as cheap as steam cleaning a carpet is going to cost you like less than a hundred bucks for a weekend rental. And refinishing hardwood might cost you two bucks a square foot. Putting in new vinyl planks might cost you three. 350 a square foot and putting in laminate planks is going to cost you somewhere between a buck and three bucks a square foot. So one of the other best ways to add value to your property or increase your rents is by adding square footage. So maybe right now there's like a little lean to porch that's just in terrible shape, but with a new coat of paint and maybe a new roof, it would look brand new and it'd add a whole outdoor living space. Stage it or pitch it to your potential tenants as now they have an area to barbecue and outdoor eating area. Maybe a bedroom doesn't have a closet, but behind it, there's just a closet into the hallway. Whereas adding a closet to that bedroom all of a sudden makes it a true bedroom instead of a study. So there's a lot of those little give and takes that you can do where you're not even actually adding square footage to the total building, but you're just changing the way that square footage is used and that can create immense value as well. Also, I really like to focus on having a feature that kind of stands out that the tenants can point to and brag to in regards to their friends or family, particularly once you start getting into that mid-range rentals or higher. So often I like to play up the character. So if it has, you know, original trim or crown molding, I like to repaint that just to really make it pop and stand out. Uh, in the past I've added book nooks, so built-in bookcases and stuff, just to really highlight the character of the room. Same with putting in the all new custom kitchen. No, don't do it. Have you considered just repainting the doors and cupboards? Because um, if you can repaint the doors and the boxes of the cupboards, you're gonna save yourself a ton of money and still get that newer looking kitchen look. And then just replace the countertops for $200. Or maybe it's $400 because there's a bunch of curves and cut pieces. But still, it's gonna be so much cheaper than putting in a brand new custom kitchen. And if the boxes and doors are in terrible shape, have you considered a retrofit kitchen? So like, a used kitchen. Have you looked on Kijiji and found any solid kitchens that someone's taken out of their house because they're putting in a new custom kitchen? Or have you looked at Habitat for Humanity or other restores 
in your local neighborhood. Because you can probably buy a used kitchen for between three and three or five thousand dollars and you're maybe going to spend another thousand two thousand dollars on countertops and getting someone to install it for you but at the end of the day you're probably going to be out of pocket somewhere between three and ten thousand dollars versus that 15 plus for a custom kitchen so on this property i really focused on five areas those areas were painting flooring updating the kitchens doing my strategic renovations and fixing the back addition on this property. Okay, so here's a summary I put together for you guys, breaking out the exact costs I incurred on my Live Street rental property, as well as a rough estimate of the hours I spent. Just so you understand, I did put a lot of time and sweat equity into this property. I think you guys can do it as well. It doesn't need to be that intimidating. Don't look at it as, oh, I have to spend 30 hours putting down flooring in my rental property, try and look at it as you're getting some free exercise, you're learning a new skill set, and in addition to that, you can listen to some uh, Bigger Pockets podcasts maybe. The first section I have here is flooring, and so you can see that broke out as roughly $2,000 for the front unit and $1,500 for the main, or about $3,600 total, $550 of which was labor that I had hired other guys to help me lay the floor. Now, I could have done this completely by myself, but to be honest, I just wanted to make sure I stayed on schedule, so that's why I ended up paying people to uh, help me lay the floors. You know, you could save yourself $550 on this project by laying all the floors yourself. It really is just going to become about a trade-off and trying to figure out what your time's worth and what your energy's worth and where best to focus your time and energy. So then on the kitchen, I think this kitchen is an area where I think it's going to surprise a lot of people how little I spent on each kitchen to get such great results. About 1100 total for the entire kitchen to get updated. So again, you could save yourself a little bit more on these costs if you did all the labor yourself, or you could have higher costs if you decide to do none of the labor yourself. At the same time, regardless of how much labor I put into this project, it was still always going to be a profitable project. It was really just about trying to figure out a trade-off. And I think at first, especially if you're tight on finances, a lot of time you can make up for that with time. So then for dishwashers, again, it costs about $250 to uh, add a dishwasher to each unit. It's the most strategic renovation on here, to be honest. I can directly attribute being able to charge higher rents because I'm adding a dishwasher to my units. And it's going to attract a better quality tenant. It also has a much better chance of keeping your unit cleaner. Same with laundry, about $500 each to add. A lot of that cost savings just comes from buying used on Kijiji. Buy your appliances used on Kijiji. There's no excuse not to do so. One thing you can easily forget about when budgeting is the finishing touches. I'd expect to at least spend a grand just on random little things for each unit. Painting, again, painting so cheap and so effective as a renovation strategy. I spent roughly $200 on each unit on paint, and that includes painting them top to bottom. So a lot of it's just labor intensive, to be honest. And if you're willing to put in that time, you're gonna get huge rewards from it, both from an equity standpoint and ability to re-rent. Some of this electrical relates to kitchen stuff, some of it relates to plumbing stuff, some of it just relates to tidying up messes that uh, previous owners had done. It's really hard to estimate. I'd recommend at the start when you're not comfortable getting acquainted with a good electrician, ideally probably a small business owner who's going to understand your perspective. Have them come through when you're doing your walk through your home inspection if you want and have them estimate the cost. They might do that estimate for free or they might charge you $100 or $150, but that's going to be a great learning template and now you're going to be able to take that quote and apply it to other properties and just make sure they really itemize it for you. Then that back addition I'd mentioned, it just needed the roof to be redone. As you can see, it wasn't a very big addition, but there's still costs that add up there. Garbage removal, again, that's mainly just going to be time intensive, but so you can see in general, ended up 8% over budget, so that's unfortunate. I really didn't want to uh, end up over budget. The first few renovations you're going to do, you're going to always end up over budget, so make sure you've built in a reserve or a buffer. Uh, I'd recommend 10 to 20%, especially at the start. I'd lean towards doing 20%. Better safe than sorry in these situations. I spent roughly 150 hours. You know, the vast majority of the tasks I spent doing, literally anyone could do. Anyone can lay these uh, vinyl plank floors. Anyone can pick up garbage and bag it. Everyone can paint. It's, it's really basic stuff. A lot of this is just kind of grunt work. And so if you don't have a ton of money, you can invest more of your time. 
and if you don't have a lot of time, invest more of your money. Either way, this deal was going to be a good deal no matter what, based on the fundamentals behind it. Even if I'd spend another $10,000 by hiring a general contractor and literally not looking at a single thing and maybe not hunting for the absolute best deals in Kijiji, this still would have been a very sound deal. So hopefully now you have a much better understanding of the exact renovations I did on this property, what the costs were, the number of man hours I put into it, or the sweat equity that I've spent on it, a better understanding of how to approach your own renovations and what, what to focus on in order to get the best bang for your buck. So, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Are the most strategic renovations adding dishwasher and laundry? If you disagree, tell me so in the comments. If you're doing something else, let me know. I'm always happy to change and improve. What renovations are you currently doing on your rental properties that I didn't mention? Are you constantly trying to add a wow factor? And what wow factors are you focusing on when doing your renovations? Are you doing things like built-in bookcases or book nooks like I'm doing? Are you going for really flashy paint colors? Are you doing big fancy light fixtures. What sort of renovations are you doing on your properties to entice tenants? I'd also love to copy your best practices. Feel free to copy my best practices. As always, hit that beautiful red subscribe button. It's right there, just click it. Uh, hit that like button if you think I'm providing you valuable content. And leave me feedback in the YouTube comment section. It means the world to me and I promise to respond to you if you do leave me a comment. All right, so that's it for this video. And part four of this, I'm gonna be really showing you how to go about renting your property, how I increase the rents on this property, why I think I can justify those higher rents. A lot of it has to do with strategic renovations, which we already covered in this video. And yeah, thanks for taking the time to watch. Until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough of it out there for us to all make it. So let's go make some money, guys. Bye.